After enjoying Batman Return to Arkham Asylum far more than expected, I added Batman Return to Arkham City to my backlog list. I found it strange that my memory of the original Xbox 360 release was so fuzzy compared to 2009's Arkham Asylum, especially as I unlocked most of the achievements, and I'm sure I replayed it at least once after 2011. Returning to it a decade later, it's now clear why it was just as influential and even more beloved than its predecessor, but I also understand why it left me reluctant to pick up 2013's Batman Arkham Origins, or 2015's Batman Arkham Knight on day one. As with Arkham Asylum, Arkham City is another entertaining and easily digestible way to learn more about Batman's expansive roster of supervillains, though I should point out playing the prior game is essential to enjoying the narrative arc and finale. Six months after the events of Arkham Asylum, a dilapidated chunk of Gotham City is walled off as an open-air prison, with the Joker, Two-Face and the Penguin carving out fiefdoms. The head warden is Hugo Strange, who seems to have considerable influence over the new Gotham mayor Quincy Sharp, who took credit for restoring order at the asylum. He maintains control over the perimeter using the brutal Tiger Security Paramilitary Group, but mostly lets the prisoners run wild as they squabble over food and medical drops. Events kick off when Bruce Wayne is apprehended and incarcerated, all according to plan of course, before swiftly recovering his Batsuit and setting out to investigate the mysterious Protocol 10. For better and worse, the ongoing rivalry between Batman and the Joker takes center stage many times during an improbably long night, once again tackling the theme of whether they represent two extremes that would not exist without each other. Thankfully, the plot is still full of twists and turns, providing an entertaining excuse to explore several key locations, including the ruins of Wonder City below, with a dozen exciting and often downright weird scenarios and boss fights. You'll encounter and briefly play as Catwoman, take down Mr. Freeze, Ra's al Ghul, and Clayface, and potentially encounter a dozen more villains if you tackle all the side missions. On one hand, it's a dense, exciting ride, but the main story arc rushes towards a conclusion, and it never feels logical that Batman would take a breather to go tackle some side missions or collect several hundred Riddler trophies. Another issue is that the side missions are doled out piecemeal between major story beats, making it possible to miss a few if you don't systematically explore, and cut off their respective mission chains until the post-game. Although the stakes might have been lower, I think I prefer Arkham Asylum's tighter narrative and horror-tinged atmosphere. Now that said, there's no denying Arkham City is the more mechanically interesting game. Arkham Asylum laid the Metroidvania-inspired foundations for these games, but while it was fun to backtrack and explore new areas with new gadgets, the Cape Crusader really made much use of his cape. With a significantly larger environment to traverse, Arkham City provides greater verticality and more opportunity to soar through the air. You get the grapnel gun from the get-go, and a simple gliding challenge unlocks the grapnel boost ability, allowing Batman to accelerate towards and launch off grapple points to extend his airtime. It's an impactful change that makes it easier to take the traditional Batman approach of sticking to the rooftops and shadows, before diving down to pick off individual goons or crash full speed into a mob. It also makes aggressive stealth viable outside of the scripted predator sequences, while making the constant back and forth across Gotham City's horseshoe layout more entertaining. Now, Arkham City retains the counter and combo approach to combat, but ramps up the scale and intensity of common brawls and the complexity of boss fights. Well, at least those you encounter in the main story. You start with more basic abilities, but you're still constantly gaining XP from combat and exploration activities that reward new skill points to unlock new abilities or improve existing abilities. There's an expanded skill tree with more gadgets you can integrate into combat, and more combo takedown moves available. But it's a mixed bag and feels designed to pad out the experience. There are arbitrarily granular upgrades, like separate melee and ballistic armor upgrades, and you share a skill point pool for discrete Catwoman upgrades. Those gripes aside, the updated free flow combat is incredible. Batman can now counter multiple opponents in ridiculous displays of speed and dexterity. He can counter disarm any melee weapon and turn them on their owners and he has more options to stun or disable the increased number of firearm-wielding foes. With larger mobs occupying more vertical and complex locations, it feels more essential than ever to first find a high point, scan enemies in the surroundings using detective vision, plan an approach, and identify priority targets before diving in. Of course, shifting to a dense and sprawling urban environment has its ups and downs. It's not perfect, and there are some barren, unfinished-looking spots, but Rocksteady still shows its prowess with an attention to fine details, excellent level design when indoors, and plenty of environmental storytelling. The city is far from a featureless sprawl of brick and concrete, with multiple districts that feature a distinctive visual design or a layout that forces you to change up your approach to traversal or combat. The Bowery features the Gotham Museum, Iceberg Lounge, and more affluent apartment blocks. Park Row has a strong Gothic vibe with the Solomon Wayne Courthouse, Church, and Ace Chemical Building. Amusement Mile features the flooded streets around the old GCPT building and Olympus Nightclub, while the Industrial District features towering chimneys and elevated walkways of the Siona Steel Mill and above it all looms Wonder Tower. 
Although most feel less expansive than those found in Arkham Asylum, there are a half dozen enjoyable interior locations, including the sprawling Siona Steel Mall, the multi-wing Gotham Museum, a claustrophobic sewer and subway system, and the multi-layered Wonder City Ruins. Every location feels every bit as detailed as the streets, packed with environmental storytelling elements, and feature most of the Metroidvania-style roadblocks you'll return to later to progress the story, or discover new secrets. As with Arkham Asylum before it, simply exploring Arkham City is a treat for those with an eye for small details. Now, unfortunately, open-world design is inherently problematic when it comes to narrative pacing and the desire to fill that space with content, seemingly irrespective of whether it offers compelling gameplay or not. In Arkham City, the side mission content feels woefully underdeveloped compared to the story missions, and most fit the description of busy work. The endlessly spawning mobs on the streets coupled with an expanded skill tree is a compromise I can live with, but half the side missions simply involve some contrivance to crisscross the city repeatedly, culminating in some sort of boss fight that's just a variation of common stealth or brawler gameplay. It's not all bad though, defeating the Mad Hatter and his illusions, tracking down Hush by investigating crime scenes, and saving Nora Freeze all provided entertaining diversions but the rest of them left me cold. If I had to pick my biggest gripe, it's the return of the Riddler. He was seemingly given months to redecorate Arkham City with an inordinate amount of Riddler Trophy mini-challenges, including dozens you can only collect as Catwoman, and the construction of elaborate challenge rooms that make little special sense given their entry point. There's a better narrative incentive this time as you periodically solve riddles and rescue hostages, but you still need to collect over 400 Riddler challenges to discover his hideout and resolve the side mission. It's beyond excessive, ruins an otherwise immersive atmosphere, and can literally double your playtime with tedious busy work. Wrapping up, my feelings on Batman Return to Arkham City are more mixed than I anticipated. It takes every element of Batman Arkham Asylum, the narrative stakes, the core gameplay loop, the boss fights and the environment, and ramps up their scale and complexity. It's the bitter game in an objective sense, but that increased scope brings with it intrusive open world busy work and potential pacing issues for a narrative designed around a single chaotic night. That said, I'd still recommend it to anyone interested in Rocksteady's Arkham Universe, just so long as they play the shorter and more focused Batman Arkham Asylum, and ignore the Riddler challenges, and maybe use a guide to prioritise the few standout missions. My younger self clearly had too much free time, so as much as I enjoyed Batman Return to Arkham City, it's not a game I'd recommend anyone try 100%. If you've got this far, please consider giving the video a like and maybe subscribing to our channel as it helps us grow.